Okay, so this is my interpretation of number three from AP Stats free response question 2018. Number three, go ahead and pause the video, read the question if you don't have the question in front of you. The way that I always approach all of these multiple event probability type questions is I draw a tree diagram. So the first question you ask yourself starts out 3.5% of children born are from multiple births, twins and triplets, etc. So what can happen for the children here? Well, you can either be born from multiple births, so I'll just put multiple births, or let's just call it not multiple birth. So this is 3.5%. So I'm going to write that as a decimal, 0 0.035. That is the probability that that happens. That leaves 0.965, because they have to add up to 1, right? So it's either one or the other. So subtract from 1, you'll get this value here. Then it says, of the children who are born from multiple births, 22%, all right, so 22% are left-handed. And that means that... Uh, I'm going to assume that means the rest of them are right-handed, so we'll call that 0.78. For the general population, not multiple births, 11% are left-handed. So that means 88% are right-handed or not left-handed. So the first thing I would do is, when I'm doing a tree diagram, I always like to figure out the probability of each branch happening independently of the others. So I'm going to multiply through all of these different probabilities. So here is what we get after we plug it all into the calculator. And what I like to do is double check that this is a valid probability distribution by adding these all together. It should all equal 1. So let's check that out. So adding them all together, I get a value of 1. Okay, so I know that I'm at least going in the right direction. So let's answer some questions now. What is the probability that a randomly selected child born in the region is left-handed? So out of all of these, which ones are left-handed? That would be this plus that. So if you add those two numbers together, that'll give you your answer. So here's how I show that all out. The probability of being left-handed equals the probability of being left-handed given that you come from multiple births plus the probability that you're left-handed given that you come from not multiple births or single. I guess I could have used single births. So I take those two together. I show that this equals that and this value right here equals this and we get, ooh, make sure our decimal point is big enough. 11385. That is part A. So looking at part B now, what is the probability that a randomly selected child born in the region is a child from multiple birth given that the child selected is left-handed? So that means I'm only looking at left-handed children. In this whole uh, tree diagram here, we're talking about this and this. So it's out of those two combined. That's the answer we just got for A. So here's how I would write that out. We want the probability that a randomly selected child in the region is from multiple birth, given, as we just said, that it's left-handed. So here's all the left-handed. It's out of the left-handed. The multiple birth part is the top. So we want the probability that it's multiple birth given that the child is left-handed. So that is gonna equal this top number, the multiple birth, out of the total. So that equals the probability that it's multiple birth and left-handed out of the probability it's just left-handed. Final answer there. Uh, you gotta work it out. What do we get when we work that out? 0 0.0676, okay, and that should answer part B. Okay, so lastly, we're looking at part C. A random sample of 20 children born in the region will be selected. What is the probability that the sample will have at least three children who are left-handed? So from part A, the, we know the probability of being left-handed is 0.11385. Part C, when I read that, that is a binomial distribution. You're either left-handed or you're not. Okay, the probability is pretty much the same. doesn't change. Okay, they're independent of each other. Those are the assumptions we make, and then we can do a binomial distribution here. I would make a little table because it helps me visualize this. So here's how I would organize this in my head. We have a x. Let's let x be a random variable. That's how many. It's the number of left-handed students if we select 20. So I'm going to write that n is going to equal 20 here. 
and the probability of success is 0.11385. We got that from part A. Now, if you mess up part A, but then you follow through correctly, you get points for that. So just make sure that you're showing everything here. We have to communicate this is a binomial distribution. So I believe the way that we can do that, I'm gonna write binomial, there's shorthand here. So we're gonna do binomial distribution. And I'm gonna write out the letters so there's no, so N equals 20 and P equals I know in class you might have not included the n equals or the p, but you know I'm going to write it out just so they know exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, in the table, they're asking the question asks, what is the probability you'll have at least three children who are left-handed? So, at least let's get the highlighter out here. At least three means we want this part of the table. The probability we have that part there. Now, what you could do is you could find each one of these probabilities individually, add them all together, that's 17. Ugh, we don't want to do that. It's probably smarter to get 0, 1, and 2, and you subtract. Remember, all these probabilities have to add up to 1. So I would use, in my calculator, a binomial CDF. I'm going to write this out. So in my calculator, I'm going to put a binomial CDF, cumulative density function. That means it adds up as it goes. And I want to add up all the way to this one, because I'm going to subtract that off. So. With n equal to 20, the probability we know from before, and then x is going to equal 2. And then when we get that, our, we're going to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 will equal, I'm going to write 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. I'm just kind of showing what I'm doing here. And that will equal 1 minus, let's figure it out in our calculator. So in our calculator, we do second. Uh, distributions and I like to scroll up because I know binomial is towards the bottom. Choice B is binomial CDF and then mine asks for the number of trials, the probability, so I'm going to type in exactly what we had and then the x value will be 2 and then you paste that and you get 59 percentage. So I'm going to write that number down just so I can again communicate. We got 59785. So 59785. So when I do 1 minus that, we find the complement, because that number represents all of these boxes up until the 2. So remember, probability distributions, they all have to equal 1 when you add them all together, the sum of all the probabilities. We're going to add up all the way to 2, and I'm going to subtract from 1, and that should leave 3 to 20. Now, some calculators have the capability of going to the right, and there's different ways to do it. That's okay, too. But I'm just going to go figure this out and I get 40 percent 40 to 15 if I round it correctly so 40 to 1, 5. so that is approximately 40.2 percent I go to the nearest tenth there all right did we answer the question a random sample what is the probability so 40.2 percent that is the probability I think that answers those questions that is question number three from 2008